Knowing how to use advanced CAD CAM software does not make you a machinist. Let me tell you what does. Ah, oh, what's up everybody, this is Titan. I am back in my office. Oh man, check it out, it is gray. My boy Jeff painted my office while I was gone. Thank you, Jeff, you were the man. And uh, Tyson, Tyson hitting it with the videos while I was gone. Tyson's of CNC, my oldest son, I love it. Giving the lathe machinists out there some love. Boom, my entire team did a great job. So before I go into where I was and what happened, I just wanna say at the end of this video, if you love what we're throwing down, bringing education and entertainment for CNC machining and industry, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and if you want us to teach something in one of these vlogs, go ahead and put it in the comments below, and you might see me talk about it in the future. All right, so it is Friday, almost the weekend, and it's been a crazy week. So on Monday, I actually went with Dave and Matt, two of my top guys, and uh, we flew out to Pittsburgh, and we went to Kenna Metal. We went over to the M&T Conference. I actually did two different speeches out there, and it was insane. I got to meet a bunch of great industry people, shop owners, machinists. We just spoke to the industry, spoke about education, just lifted it all up. At the end, I just got to talk to so many people and just, just have sincere conversation about trade, about what we need to do in this country to lift up our kids, to lift up our shops, to make more money, to bring jobs back and take all of it into the future. One of the things in my speech you know, and that you guys have probably heard me say that kind of makes people step back is like the skills gap is a lie. Because we know there is a shortage of workers, right? But let me just explain something. When I go up there and I talk about it, what, I, what I'm truly saying is like, I go to IMTS, I go places, people always with their suits up there on the stage and they're talking about the skills gap, skills gap, skills gap. They keep pointing at it. You know, it creates drama and, and there's this big problem and, and we're never solving it. So what I do is actually come in and say, look, like that's a lie because that's not the problem. That's really just a symptom of the real problems. And the real problems are we have an awareness problem, right? All these people at Home Depot and McDonald's and, and working in all these service places that are making you know this amount of money, if they understood that they could actually walk into industry, there was an opportunity for them, and they could actually make good money where they could raise a family and buy a house and buy a car, they would actually jump at that opportunity. You have people lined up at the door, but they simply don't know because you don't see it on TV, you don't see it around. Right? And that's why film and YouTube and all our platforms, our TV show, that's why we're so serious about how we film and the quality, because we want to pull back the curtains and show everyone that there is industry here. Another issue is we have a training issue. A lot of people can talk about money and they can say, well, the industry doesn't pay enough and, and this, this, and, and everybody goes off on these tangents. But I truly believe that it's all related to training. Because you have to have the skills to pay the bills, right? You gotta have the skills, you gotta be able to multitask, you gotta be able to solve the right problems for the right people, and therefore you deserve money. There's companies all over the nation and world that are rising up, right? SpaceX, you look at their rocket now, it's made out of stainless steel, right? It doesn't drop a first stage, it actually flies up, refuels, it'll be able to go to the moon, go to Mars. People are inventing ships that basically go up, go over and drop you in another country in 30, 40 minutes instead of nine and 15, 18 hours. I mean, the whole world is changing and these space vehicles and autonomous cars, they all need parts. So manufacturing right now is more important than it has ever been, okay? And you can make good money. Well, Titan, robots are taking all the jobs. Look at the video in San Francisco that we did, Zooks, right? It's an autonomous vehicle, it's a robot, but now there's 700 people working at Zooks, right? There's high paid, skilled manufacturers building these cars. I always tell people like, in the past, we had 100 people 
to 100 shops. But in the future, it's going to be like 30 people to 100,000 shops. Because of 3D printing and automation and all of these things, more companies are going to rise up that just couldn't have existed in the past. So training is more important than ever because we need technicians to run robots, to fix robots, to actually put them in place, to design the cells, all of it. When I look at our current training programs, I see so many great individuals that are extremely talented and they build programs and I truly believe that they're heroes, right? Because they're giving back to our kids and to our industry. But one of the main problems here is that they look at it and they try to control it with what they know based on their experiences of how they used to do it. And in the future, we have to be able to take self out. And we have to understand that we will not be able to comprehend all the technology that's coming out. The technology is coming at a, such a rapid pace. So what we need to do is we need to create a training program that allows students to actually learn how to manufacture and then manufacture and machine through repetition and allow the process of learning to take its own life. As leaders and teachers, we need to allow the students to become better than us and therefore teach us how to do it. I see so many out there saying like, I look at the shops around us and they use this CAD CAM system. Therefore, we're gonna use this CAD CAM system so that we can actually serve these shops. And at the end of a year, I look at the total amount of parts that they make, and it's not that much. They're trying to make a vice, they're making iPhone covers, they're making simple things. And those students go into the shops and they struggle simply because they haven't made enough parts. And one thing that I made very clear this week in both of my presentations was that process of making parts with increasing difficulty is what makes machinists. Making parts from start to finish, from raw stock to a finished part, your mind creating all of it, holding the part in your hand and inspecting it to print, and then making another part and another part and another part and another and another and another, over and over and over, as many parts as possible, increasing the complexity, going from standard three axis to live tooling to five axis to horizontals to building fixtures and just making part after part. That is what makes machinists. You need time in the game cutting chips. You need to make a lot of different parts. You gotta experience a lot of different things. And that simple fundamental principle is what we built the Titans of CNC Academy on. Repetition and escalating the complexity. So why was I talking about CAD CAM? Because most programs put a difficult CAD CAM system in place which limits the amount of parts that can be made in a semester or a year or even a two or four year program, right? It limits you. So what we need to understand is that in the future, there's gonna be all kinds of software that we're gonna use. We're gonna multitask. Going from one software to another software, once you understand the process of making parts and you are a machinist, that just takes days or a week. It's like a Chevy or a Ford or an automatic or a stick shift. Once you understand how to drive, it's not hard to learn how another car operates, right? It's the same thing. So I wanna challenge teachers. I wanna challenge leaders that when you're training people, go after repetition and use a CAD CAM system like Autodesk Fusion 360. That might sound like a plug, and it is, and it's great for them, but they didn't tell me to say it. I say it because I use it in the academy because it's free for all students. When you have autistic kids and they're going through a 16-week CAD CAM course, and they graduate and they get a job as an operator, the CAD CAM leaves, right? The CAD CAM leaves because it's so expensive. 
But with Fusion 360, they can work as an operator. They can keep running the academy parts because they're all free. They can keep lifting up their skills until they get an opportunity to actually program on the floor. It could take a month, it could take five years, it could take 10 years. But the chances of that opportunity coming are greater because they actually have CAD CAM free at home on their laptop that they can use. And that's another reason for the Academy's sheer success while we have 60,000 students in just a few years because these guys can use it at home. They can train at home. They can do all the CAD and the CAM at home, follow all the tutorials, and then they can come into class after doing it over and over and watching all the simulation. They can come into class and actually machine chips and make parts which makes your class more efficient in its training method. You guys understand what I'm saying? So don't focus on the CAD CAM and the software. Focus on teaching machining through repetition and raise your game when it comes to complexity and then use the software that gets you there the fastest. Once you're programming five axis, once you're doing aerospace parts, once you're going off of datums and doing all these different things, at that time, if you go to a company and they say, hey, we're using this software, you can just switch over because they all do exactly the same thing. They take tools and they offset the tools off of the model and you basically tell it speeds and fees and depths of cut and it just does it for you. The software is easy and truthfully, all the top companies have great software, but which one's the easiest to use? Which one can you use for free? which allows you to use it 24 hours a day so that you can actually put the time in to raise your game and raise your skills so you can actually go out there and make money because you deserve the money. When it comes to training, we have to rethink what we're teaching our kids, all right? We need to take the starting line and we need to push it forward so that we can give them an opportunity to excel past our experience. Let them take it because these kids are great, they're amazing, and they're incredibly smart, but you have to engage them and you gotta test them and you gotta challenge them and then they'll lock onto it and they will take this industry to greatness. So I'm gonna end it with that. We have an awareness problem and when we solve that and we get people in, we have to fix our training program to train them in a way that they can rise up, make good money, and help our nation compete. And if you're in another country, help your country compete so you can put food on your tables, right? Competition keeps us sharp, it keeps us driving forward, and it is a good thing. Okay, so until the next vlog, you guys have a great day. I am out. Boom.